Good old mute button. Let's get to the action, guys. I'm sorry. I'm in a fast market. I'm here trading the action just as much I hope you guys are. It seems like it's one of those days where we got to have our lights on and ready to go because now we're getting a little bit of a change in the market. And I don't know if it's the Red Bull in me, but I'm ready to go, team. Let's get after it. I don't know if you guys are ready. If you guys are looking at some stocks, Tell me in the chat. I'm already taking some like day trade slash swing trading ideas right now. I'm pushing at it. We'll see what happens here, team. Let's get right to the action. All right, let's go to it right now. So um, getting into the stocks, let's go. Right now, I'm in Unity, team. You guys know I've been battling on this one all day. I've taken some gains. I've taken some losses on Unity. I'll tell you right now. It's time to come after it. So what I did is I got into it. I've, I've loaded into this now trying to get this back above the 2890s here towards the close here. Of course, I don't want to take this one really into earnings, but I think it could run right now into that earnings. We'll see if that takes off. But this isn't the only trade I have on right now. Really good profits going right now in Google, baby. Look at this takeoff in Google today. And what is this all based on? AI, AI, AI. They're having a deal, uh, event going on right now. They started talking about how they're going to include more search engine with AI. And this is really taking off on Google. Look at that move. At first, it started at 1 p.m. It got that real spike. I saw it come down. I missed this move. I went to go take a little bit of a break, come back, and I've already seen it just jumping here. So I jumped in there at 110.89. Normally, I never do this. I never buy high breaks. But based on what was going on and what I saw in the news, I took my shot. This is up there now to 113, almost 30 here. As I'm up about 2% on Google here, I'm going to actually take some off here because it just seems like this is a really good first move here. Let's go ahead and pay myself a little bit here. All right, just got some out there at the 113.33s from 110.89. Not a bad trade at all. We're talking about right here when it just cut up. It came back down, now pushed off. I just took some profit here. Now we'll let this Google trade work wherever it wants, and I'll keep a stop right here where I got in. So now I can let this continue to work. Got some profits, and now Unity starting to get a little bit of a lift. We'll see if we get this move. As you guys can see, I'm pushing and pushing right now. This isn't the only trade that I'm in. I also went back after SPXL, the three-time bull leverage for the SPY. SPY coming back a little bit. So as we were coming up here, I took my shot. I saw Google going higher. I said, I'm going to take a little bit more. I got this one at 72.68. So we're talking right here. We're not, we're not too far from that, right? But nice little move on the first action. Was able to sell some already on this one at 73.35. So at this point, when it came up here to the 35 area, I sold some on that first break of VWAP. Now I'm looking for the next step up in the market. Let's see if the SPY can go higher here and we keep driving up. So I'm taking some shots. We'll see what happens, team. All right, what's going on out there? What's my favorite short idea? Well, I'll tell you what, team. Today was one of those days where you win some, you lose some, right? At the open, what did I have to do? I ended up getting out of some oil trades that would have been major winners. So this is where I kind of got hit a little bit today. And there was a shakeup, right? Now, the only question is, who's gotten it right, right? Was it the buy the dippers that came in later in the day? Or was it a complete turnaround that we saw from the CPI numbers? All right. So this is where I, I don't think anybody knows right now. The only thing we can do is be traders, baby. And traders, we're going to trade, baby. Let's get after it. Let's see what we can get to. And of course, later today, we have a great guest for you guys. We got Michael Kratz from the Fivers excited to talk a little bit about some stock market action, the CPI, what's going on, what Michael trades. And of course, we'll talk a little bit about a prop firm today. Hmm, prop firm action. Stay tuned, team. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. Smash the like button. Let's get to the action. Let's go back to the stocks and see what else I can get into. All right, now there is one that is starting to make a move here. Now we got in Unity moving higher, and like I told you guys, this is more of the day trade, so I gotta stay with it, right? I, 
got to make the money, right? So if you guys see me a little bit focused out and like kind of paying attention to the trade, talk to me in the chat. Let's keep it going, team. Normally, I have like a whole team when I'm live trading. But hey, you guys know me. A trade has got to trade when there's money to be made, baby. We'll see what happens. If we can make this move through now 2880s, that's what I'm looking for. And then we make our move towards this trend line. Once we take out that trend line, now I want to take some profits towards 29 and above. We'll see what happens here on Unity. Right now, nice trade there that I got in. You guys know I've been battling here. So mixing it up a little bit, taking some day trading action, maybe some swing trades on the Google. We already took some profits on that. And of course, there's one more that I want to tell you guys about that I took. I'm not holding back today. I went for NCLH just recently. And this is actually right now just at the same spot where I grabbed it. So I grabbed it at 14. Going to go ahead and see if we can take that next step up on this one. This one's more of a daily approach. Long-term swing that I'm thinking about here for NCLH. We're talking probably off the weekly chart also where it can really kind of make a move. I'm going to hold off the 13s right now for NCLH. So this is going to be about a buck risk. And I think this could get all the way up there towards 18 for first profits. That'd be about $4 for a $1 risk. You guys know I'm all about the profit to loss ratio. So we'll see if this one can really make a move. Taking a shot, team. Let's go. Let's get after it, team. Smash the like. Let's see what else is going to go on there. Uh, big order sitting on the book at 41.45 on the ES, Walter. I have to take a look. CPI big nothing burger. Hmm. Was it? Was it a nothing burger? We'll see here towards the end. All right. Um, we'll see what else is going on here. Will we get the lift? Unity now starting to push a little bit, but we, I wanted to get through this 2880s into the 2890s up there towards 29. Take some good first profits and look to see if we can get expansion here towards the close. Will we get a power hour rally here? going all right team and of course we can take a look at the spy and you guys know i'm also in spxl so this i might be a little bit biased to the upside today we'll see what happens right all right so we'll see if we can hold the vwap right now that's one thing that i mentioned about the spy let's take a look at the cues cues are uh, decently above the VWAP right now and starting to push higher here. We'll look to see if this can continue riding the trend. And of course, there's some other names that kind of keep an eye out for that are getting the lift, right? I'll take a look at Amazon. That's not looking too bad at all here. I actually like this move today. I just missed it, right? And so this one's looking like it's continuing towards the upside. Not a bad little break. Now holding the 200. I'd look for the next stop, right? We got this high here from Thursday, 110.86. But I think we could even get back into this kind of 114 area if we really start pushing higher than that 110. 86 spot we're already at 110 there for amazon google continuing here 112 90s can we get all the way to 114 today we'll see what happens but not a bad little profit take on the first little action there for google like i talked about if it comes back to my entry down here i'll get out break even but looking to see if this can continue riding the trend spy overall just hanging out here towards the 41220s we'll look to see if it takes the next leg Let's go to some of the sectors today. Take a look at the industries. What is hot today in the overall market? Just like kind of top movers in the S&P 500. You got this AKAM now pushing higher. I love how it went sleepy here on the VWAP. That's a good looking sign here as you're now pushing up higher from that 85 going to that 86. This one's a software infrastructure play as it really starts to push higher. We'll see. If it can continue, it looks like we just did that kind of gap fill after the recent gap down. So not a bad little gap fill there for AKAM. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other stocks here. Healthcare names also pushing higher today. What was going there? You can see diagnostics and research. Why were those stocks moving? Hmm, it felt to me like some of the Kathy Wood names were getting a little bit of a lift today. And let's take a look at some of those names. Well, here's Diagnostics and Research, AKAS, Exact Sciences. This one had a nice little move higher. CRISPR and the biotechnology pushing higher. VERE, uh, VERV, nice little move here. Verb Therapeutics. A lot of these kind of Kathy Wood names moving higher today. So I'm going to keep on watch to see what happens there. But healthcare, not having a bad day overall here in the second place here. Uh, diagnostics and research stocks, definitely keep your eyes on some of those as they start to come higher. DXCM is one that I've played recently and took the gains. 
Now it's kind of been going sideways here. Um, would this take the next step up? This is one that I will keep on my watch. Dexcom, not a bad looking chart there. Even on the weekly, as we start to push higher through this kind of 123s, we'll look to see if kind of like the 120 area holds. You can see here just recently how that price action held pretty well there. I kind of like this one. Especially if I can get a pullback towards maybe like 122s, I don't I don't mind risking a little bit underneath that 120 towards the 119s. I'll keep an eye on this Dexcom. Of course, this is Diagnostics and Research. I've seen the um, kind of even commercials for Dexcom, so I think this could keep pushing. Well, this is one that we've already made the gain. Remember, this one was one that I got washed out on with DHR. Um, I took the gains and then took the loss on DHR. So it kind of paid the price for DHR, but you can see how DHR has been turning around. We'll see what happens on this one. That's the diagnostics and research stock. All right, let's keep going. Utilities also up today. What's really getting hit? We need to watch to see how it turns around here. I'm keep watching. Now I got Unity pushing a little bit higher here. I'm just watching a team. We got there towards the 2885 right on the trend line. I'm going to look to see if that can keep pushing higher team. So let's keep Let's keep going after a team, and I will keep watch on that Unity move. I'll put it up a little bit higher for myself so that I don't have to keep coming back here for you guys on that. Let's go looking into financial services, which is the most beaten down sector right now. I'm taking a look to see if the banks start coming back. So does Bank of America start working its way back, right? Does uh, JPM start working its way back? Goldman Sachs, names like that, Morgan Stanley. You can see how we started to come back recently, but in the morning, we really kind of sold off. Look at the regional bank outlook, KRE. You can see how that sold off. Will we start getting a lift again in the banks? If I could see that lift coming, then I think it can rise all the tides up higher. Of course, especially the technology move, right? Look how the technology move went from the bottom all the way to the top of the range pretty quickly. So let's see if that can keep moving. All right, we'll see what else is making the moves there. Um, I'm still watching the Unity to see if I can get that pop into the 29s, take some profit, and then, of course, we'll see what happens on that. All right, there's some a little bit of action there into the 85s. I'll let you guys know once I get into the 2890s there so I can take some profits into the 29 there for Unity and working it, team. As you guys know, a lot of the times I'm more in kind of swing trade mode here, but since this change happened in kind of the afternoon, and what really happened there? It was Google mentioning an AI news. And then I also saw there was some more kind of debt talk. Of course, you guys know that uh, the government's been focusing on that debt ceiling. And maybe some of that is what shook this back to the upside. But I'm riding the momentum right now. The only question is, how high can we go? All right, we'll see what else is going on there. Um, we'll see when I get into that 2890s right now. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it right there. NVIDIA turned back around. Google, will that just keep pushing towards that 11350s? I won't mind if that keeps going up there. Meta turned around also. That was a little bit red. AMD now starting to catch a little bit of a bid. Is this one to come back to the VWAP? We'll see what happens on that one. And NVIDIA, look how quickly NVIDIA comes right back up towards the VWAP. Will we close green on NVIDIA today? after being deep in the red earlier. So opening price there, 285.95. Let's see if we can get back above. We're at 289 there. Doesn't look too bad, at least for the opening price. Now starting to push higher towards that 289. Can we get to the 290s? We'll find out on NVIDIA. This is why I'm not fighting NVIDIA. It just seems like when it comes back, it comes back roaring. All right, let's take a look at some other names. Para is deep in the red. Will this start to make its way back? We'll see what happens on that. Did you get into AMD? I didn't get into AMD. I don't know if you guys are talking about that in the chat, um, but I'm looking at it. I just wanted to see if this will pop back now. Um, I remember I was looking at AMD just a couple of days ago through 90. That would have been my attempt to get it, but that was back on Monday. So now I think it's a little bit too far gone, but hey, to each his own, right? Um, Unity just tapped 88, almost to 2890s. I'm just keeping a close eye because I want to take some profits and just keep working the profits, right? You guys know I love how I can be able to take some off and then take a lot of the pressure off for the rest of the day. All right, been buying KSS, IBM, and Triple M. 
Mm, EKS. We can talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to be trying to move all around because, as you guys know, a little bit in the fast market. So we got to keep it going here and we'll see what else to talk about. Of course, we can take a look at some of the earning stocks that were for today. There was tons of earning stocks to go through some of those. I'll definitely take a look at Upstart, Airbnb, and those are coming up. KSS coming back here today, catching a little bit of a bid here. Doesn't look too bad. Daily chart at least nice off the lows, so I can't blame you for looking at KSS. At least you probably know exactly where your out is. We'll see what happens on that trade. All right, there, Unity kind of trying to make this move, but they're now pulling back a little bit here. We'll look to see if it can hold the trend line, really kind of make that next step up there towards the 29s. Of course, I'm going to a shorter time frame just to keep up with it, but we'll see what happens there. All right, uh, another name that's had a really nice day in not a bad uh, week is CRM. That's pushing higher. Definitely keep your eyes on names like that as software application names keep to push. And this one made a nice move through 200 yesterday, held the 200 pullback today back to the 205. All right, let's go to Upstart. That was one of the stocks that I was going to watch today. Probably inside day is what I think you're seeing right now in Upstart, but not a bad looking hourly chart, right? It's pulled back. It's gone sideways, but it hasn't really just tanked on you today. So I'll be watching to see if it can kind of hold the 18 pullbacks here and take another step up, but definitely just going sideways on the day for right now. All right, let me take a look at what else is making moves here. Of course, uh, we had a firm. A firm was pushing higher here just recently. Made a move there towards 1283s. Will this make a move to 13 today? I think this is loading up a little bit. You had that nice little kind of inside day Tuesday. Now you're pushing higher through that Monday high. The high there, 1198. I feel like it holds 12 pullbacks. You're looking good right now. You can see how recently you just went towards 1190s and started covering that 12. I like if it can hold 12 on the day and start pushing back towards the 13. Doesn't look too bad there in a firm. All right, I'm um, just keeping the battle on and definitely stick tuned, guys. In just about 13 minutes, we will get into my interview in just a few minutes. Excited to go ahead and talk to Michael Kratz here. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of trade to pull action, prop firm. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the market. Seems like we got a fast one today. Let's go back to the SPY right now and see what we're seeing. We're still just climbing and climbing the wall of worries, it seems like. Uh, and this all really kind of started around 145, especially. Um, I, I feel like Google got it kick-started, but of course, debt talk might have got this to continue pushing stronger. So now it'll just be kind of a matter of can Google continue to push higher? And will we see this lift a little bit more? Airbnb is another name that we were looking at in pre-market prep because I, I really like this one. I felt like the report really wasn't that bad. Um, I can give you guys the numbers, but just to kind of point towards it, what they got hit on was their Q2 revenue outlook. But the 2Q revenue outlook, the top end, was at $2.45 billion, while the estimate's at $2.42 billion. So if they meet their top end line number, they'll actually beat their Q revenue, uh, revenue guidance outlook. So I know that they lowered the guidance there, but the estimates were right there. So it seems to me like they gave a number uh, slightly below the estimate and slightly above the estimate. So it's just going to be more in line what happens there with Airbnb. Airbnb did make a nice little push up higher towards the 115. One thing that I caught was that Airbnb is talking AI. And uh, that's one thing that, that we need to keep an eye on for. Um, he talked about a, a concierge service, right? Like kind of like you would go to Airbnb and tell it, hey, I want to go to LA this weekend. Um, I'm bringing two people. What can I do? And it doesn't only tell you uh, your lodging. It can tell you a lot of different things, right? And so they're trying to make it kind of more immersive experience app. We'll see if that really takes off, right? It's kind of more of an idea thinking right now. But Airbnb, maybe with some AI help, maybe it can get a little bit of a lift. Doesn't seem too bad. Even PayPal talking AI. Everybody's talking AI, man. Look at your Google, man. Let's take a look there. Uh, 317. Uh, this, this does not look too bad here. Can we get another little push here towards the 113.50s? Let's see if we get that push. Unity setting up there. It's, it's just battling in the push right now. I'm just looking to see if we can continue riding this trend higher.
And of course, SPXL, my way of playing the SPY kind of push right now. We're up there towards 73.70s, almost a full point of profit here. Um, so I'm going to take another half off. So I'll just have a quarter of the position left here. But it just looks really nice here on this little push here for SPXL. All right, just took a little bit more there at, we got some, let's see if I get some out there. I tried to get 70. There we go. Come on. Fill me. All right. I see what happened there. Boom. There we go. Got it out there. Now I got it out. 7385 is not a bad little move there for SPXL. Another little profit there. Now just going to continue riding the trend, right? Just riding it up. And of course, this is kind of more of the day trading aspect. Um, I don't want to really hold this overnight on the SPXL. I'd hold maybe the Google on the swing, um, but not going to hold like SPXL because it's a little bit leveraged. I'm just trying to ride the momentum up higher here, take the gains. It's been a really good trade for me today on SPXL. I was able to ride a little bit earlier on this momentum trade uh, when we were starting to move back up here towards the 74th. The key is taking profits a little bit early has really helped me and not looking for a huge continuation move but more like getting back towards the range. All right, we'll see what else is going on. Twilio taking off. Let's take a look at that one. Um, that was one that got, really got beat down today, but look how it's ending up the day now. It's starting to really bounce and get a little bit stronger. They're coming after weak names to see if they'll turn around. Not a bad little push there in Twilio. Um, of course, Twilio might be even doing better than PayPal today. Yeah. Way better than PayPal today, even though uh, Twilio is still like an ugly looking chart. It's a lot better than PayPal, as you can tell. PayPal, not looking good, guys. All right, let's keep going. Uh, EKS now WTI at 72.56 a barrel down today. And that's going to be a little bit of a head scratcher for me because you guys know I've been going after the oil trade, but I missed a lot of that action today. I could have got a really nice gain on that move. Just got a little bit shaken out right at the open on this first little action that it was going back towards 110. Of course, I was really close to uh, 109.70s. So I started getting in the red and I was just like, nah, I'm not having it, team. So I got out of it and missed all this action. That's how it can happen, team. I'll always be transparent about things like that because the truth is, if you guys learn from that, right? Maybe I was a little bit too scared of what was going on. There was a lot of upside action before in the pre-market. Who knows? But the truth is it did shake me out and was not able to get that gain. And I mean, we're still pretty far away from my original entry, which is up here towards like the 109 70s. But it's been a battle right now where XOM, you can see it here. We'll just see if it can come right back down towards the 106. All right, let's take a look at some other action there. But everything has a bottom. I think today was PayPal's bottom Jenny, the only problem with that is that I really don't like to play bottoms, but that's up to you, Jenny, right? If you like PayPal's bottom there, hey, to each his own, right? The only question for me is where do I go off of? I'd have to look left, right? And the next levels for me, to tell you the truth, at least on the monthly levels, the next stop for me is down there towards 42, but it's all up to you, right? I, I always have to try to use some levels, some support, something that I'm going off of, but if that's your call for the bottom, hey, I wish you the best, right? We'll see what happens. I just really don't like to bottom fish. Um, it just never has done me well. All right, I'll see what else is going on. There's a little bit more of a push there from SPXL. And finally, Unity into the 2890s here. Now we're going to look to see if the trend line holds here on the five minute. You guys saw me work this one. Now we're going a little bit higher here. 2894s. Can we get there towards 29? I'm looking at it right now, but it's hard not to rush towards the profit right now. I will tell you guys that. So I'm looking at it right now, seeing if we can hold this pullback, especially don't want to see it cut through like kind of like 2880s here. Just want to see it keep working towards my 29. All right, now finally NCLH finally going a little bit into the green. Going to keep watch on that one. XPXL, we're going to take it all out as we start breaking here towards 74s, 25s. I'll take them all out and celebrate a really nice win there for SPXL. All right, so let me actually get that ready here. I'll get that set up. 
right into let's do 74 23 i don't mind taking it all out there just having the order ready to go as we break the 74s i can start putting it out there 7402 starting to show up let me see if i can get a little bit more there we go we're getting a little bit higher here so i'm going to put the order out there 74 23 if we can get it up there i don't mind getting all out of my spxl trade all right, uh, seeing uh, Google continue to work, seeing Unity start to push a little bit higher here. Now to the 95s here. So I'm going to go ahead and just run towards a little bit of the profit here. I don't mind taking a little bit here. 28.95s just took 70% of the position off there. So I got about 30% of the position left. Now can let it try to work through 29. Not a bad gain here. Battling team live in front of you guys. Let's go. All right, we'll see what else is going on there, team. Microsoft just declared, declared the end of the bear market or the beginning of the end. Who thinks what? I don't know. I, I'll leave Microsoft to be, but I can tell you at least Google, that, that was a nice little push. So not a bad little move there for the AI move there. XPXL turning around a little bit here. Hasn't gotten there to the 7420s. Turned around around at the 7408s. I'm looking to see if we can get that last little push. Take the profits. And run. Nothing wrong with taking that money and running, especially in this type of market. All right. U.S. Steel may be reversing. Hmm. I'll take a look at the X. You guys know how I like X. The, the only question, right? The only question I always say, man, is going to give it to you. All right. We'll see what happens there in U.S. Steel as it is pushing back a little bit. This is one that has been really weak as of late. So, I'm going to let this one tell me at least that it's turned around first before I start going after it here. But definitely not a bad day, at least. It bounced off the 21. It looks like support. And you're really starting to come back here towards the close. Not something I'm taking right now, but something that I'll keep on watch. All right. What else is going on there? Problems with bottoms. Every little pop gets sold. Yeah, I agree with that, Jay. And you have what they call just classic, right? Overhead supplies. Unity plus two four percent to close to high of day. We'll see. Unity doesn't look too bad there as it just pushed towards the 29 and got there towards 2902. We'll look to see if I can get there back there towards 2913s, 2920s, right before the close. We'll see. All right, SPXL there towards 7418. XPXL, can I get that last little move? Come on, come on, fill me. 7420s on the offer. Need a couple more pennies here, but I don't mind switching off and then just getting the heck out. So let me see if this can push through, take the profits, and run. It won't be a bad little 2% gain there on the intraday action. All right, there's 7420s. Looking for a little bit more as it comes to this resistance of 26. Got the order out there for 23s. Uh, I'm not seeing it move there. Just looking for it right now. Let's see if we can get it. Just need a little bit more pop there. Now it's turning around a little bit there at the 7419 level. Just gonna give it a second more to see if it can hold that 74 and push through the profits. All right, how's Google doing now? Google's loading up, feels like by the 90 EMA. I want to see if it can hold the 90 EMA on pullbacks, especially when I'm looking for momentum moves. You can see that light blue line. Some people use the 10. I use the nine. I'll look to see if that can come right back up through the 11350s. All right. Uh, wow. The chat. What's going on out there, team? How we doing out there, team? All right. Um, might start selling some AMD puts here. Hmm. What's a ticker for aluminum? I got you, man. Of course, Raz. You got AA for aluminum. You got Alcoa Corporation. That's not a bad one to take a look at. And you're also going to have, of course, uh, CENX. That's another one I look at. Uh, Century Aluminum Company. Um, we could take a look at how those are looking. They haven't been doing well as of late. Look how this looks. This looks very like kind of like head and shoulders at the top here and then falling off off the neckline. So that doesn't look good right now. Alcoa also pulling back and just doesn't look good. At least late as of late since March on a big decline. Maybe this turns around, but at least from what I see right now, I don't like it. It's all up to you, right? All right, let's keep going after it, team. We got a lot more for you guys right here on Start Swing Trace. So hit the like. Let's get them up there, and let's get some more people in here. Let's see what other stocks we can trade here towards the close. 
So SPXL there finally turning around a little bit back there towards the 74s. We got close there. It went to 74.21. Might have missed it by three pennies there. And a little part of that is I'm not really watching it. A lot of times I probably would have just canceled and taken maybe the 74.19s here. But I'm trying to look right now to see if we can get back above the 74s, back up there. So especially not going to let it go through our last exit that we got out at 73.85s. We'll see what happens on this pullback. All right, let me have that set up just in case it does go through that level to get out. But I also want to get out if it can go back to the upside and get me out at the 7420s. All right, setting that up there just in case it does come back down on me. Definitely going to get out of that name. But now just to keep working it, right? The same way I want to work the unity. I've already taken some profit and now going to look to go ahead and get out of the trade. We'll see what happens there. All right, let's go to it. Stay focused. Hey, Money Mitch, thank you for yesterday's show. Went back this morning to relook the interview. Uh, who do we have on deck today? Well, hey, perfect time and stay focused. You know it. All right, in a second, we're going to be bringing on Michael Kratz here. And of course, he's a trader that takes a look into the market, right? Stay around. We'll take a look into the market. We'll see. We'll talk a little bit about CPI, what sectors are doing good today, what trades maybe he taking. I'll talk a little bit about my trades too. Stay around, team. We got a lot more for you guys right here on Benzinga. All right, let's keep going to the action. There's a nice little push there in Unity. Let's see if we can get a little bit more push here towards 2910, 2915s. Take it all out and run, baby. Run, I'm trying to take a little bit of some money, 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 money. All right, team, here's 2902. Let's go ahead. Let's see if we can get that move. Also, XP, SPXL now towards 7414s, almost towards that profit take. Let's see if we can get that move towards the higher up. And if Google can close to the up move, I'll hang on to the swing. This is looking really good here as we're getting our move. There's 2903s. Let's see if this can keep moving. Another one I like is Netflix, but I've already missed that kind of pullback action. So we'll see what happens tonight in Disney's earnings. Disney's earnings will be coming out tonight. Maybe that continues Netflix's move. Of course, Disney would probably have to have that up move, but we'll find out what happens on that one. There's Unity to 2903. Can we get there towards 2910 here? Doesn't look too bad as we start to push a little bit higher here in Unity. What a day, what a day. It's been a battle for me, team. And I'm not going to lie, it's not always easy, right? Sometimes you're going to have to battle a little bit in the day and then look to see if we can get the turn. It looks like we got a little bit of a turn back towards the upside. I was battling early on. Glad that I was quick to profits because that's what let me battle on the day, right? I took a really good profit early in the day and then was able, I gave some of that back but then get it a really nice day here towards the close, taking the unity trade again, SPXL again. And sometimes you got to get out and be willing to get back in, right? I think this is one of the, the weaknesses that I'm starting to turn to a strength, which is very difficult, right? Things that we all need to keep in mind. All right, let's keep going, team. We'll see what else is going on. Uh, definitely going to have to keep going. Uh, just give me one second, team. All right, let's go ahead. We'll be on in just a few seconds here with Michael. Looks like he's having a little bit of issues with the device connecting, but he should be with us in just a few seconds here. All right, just keeping an eye on this XPXL trade. If not, hey, I, I, I'll keep it trading. You know me, team. All right, we'll be joined right now by Michael. Looks like we're getting up there. Now the XPXL trade, boom, baby. Let's go. Not a bad one at all. This one was a good one here today. I, I, I got to say, I'm glad I went after it. Took the shot there. Normally, don't do too much day trading towards the close here. But the power hour seemed like we were getting some momentum. I rode that momentum higher. Took the outs there in threes. I took it out at half. I took it out at half. And the remainder there at the end, right? And I think that that's not too bad. 
Not too bad. A little bit of a position on SPXL. Unity starting to push here towards 2906. You know what, team? We're about to get towards our interview. So I want to kind of be focused on that. I'm going to go ahead and take the action off here on Unity. I'm trying to take some out there. Boom. Just hit that. There we go. Unity out 2904. Uh, I'll take that. Won't be mad about it. And now just have Google and NCLH. NCLH, I'm definitely holding on to for a little bit of a bigger swing. That doesn't look too bad. Original entry, 14. I'll look for that to go higher. Google, we've already taken a really nice profit. So from here on out, what I'll do is I'll just be break even on the rest there for Google. Um, so just going to lead that to work. That will be a move back down towards 110.89. So I will just put 110.90s here to kind of watch here for the close as I'm in this interview. If it comes back and stops me out, so be it, team. We'll see what happens on that Google. All right, getting out of that, getting out of my market talk, going to go ahead and get to my interview today. You guys out there, smash the like. Let's go ahead. Let's bring on Michael Kratz here. Trade the pool. How are we doing, Michael? Hey, how's it going, buddy? How are you doing, Mitch? I'm good doing, to be on that show. Hey, hey, you know how we are, man. And, and some days there's days where we have to hit the gas pedal. Some days we got to hit the brake pedal. Right. Definitely gas pedal here towards the close. So, I'm happy to bring some good luck to your trade. Hey, Just, that's what it's all about, right? It's good to have you on, Michael. How, how is your trading day already? You already done for the day or how you been? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm pretty busy. So in most cases, I will trade the first maybe two hours of the day this time, at least for the last year or so. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, mostly day trading, especially in this kind of environment, you know, the market is just booming. Yeah, so. definitely. There's there's not a short of plays, right? I mean, a lot of action, a lot of action today. You can definitely say so. And yeah. that that's what I look for. You know, there's not many times that I trade like power hour, like a, a day trade. But man, I started catching Google's move and I saw that that AI mention and I was like, hold on. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we, We've been jumping on everything AI. So I saw the volume that came into Google and that just got me a little bit excited. I don't know if you saw that move, Michael, but I, I, I could clearly see that like volume pop at 1 p.m. It was down there on a five minute basis, like trading only like 400,000 shares. Really yeah. quickly, we went up there towards 1.3 million. And right after that, another million shares on the five minutes. I was like, oh yeah, somebody wants in on Google and you could see it, a little bit of a pop, a little pullback to the same kind of levels where we popped off of. And I, sure. I felt that was all that volume rushing in and it re, re load up. So and I don't take high breakouts often, Mike. I don't know about you. High day breakouts to me, probably not the, the, the top strategy for me. But yeah. when I see momentum and I can ride the wave, I just went after it today. Not a bad little move there, Google. How, how was your reaction today, this morning from CPI? That was crazy. Crazy. I was live on um, our friends of ours, Chat with Traders, and um, I was doing like a live stream in pre-market prep. And we were talking and chatting and looking at some, um, you know, potential trades to take. And the market just flew, right? Just like a crazy, as soon as the CPI went. So was amazing to see it. I always like to see it. The market moves like that. That's uh, that's the adrenaline of a trader, right? You want to see the market move. Definitely. I mean, that's what we need, right? We, if the market ain't moving, we ain't making money. That's just that's just the truth, right? And so we definitely got that move. We got a little bit of an under CPI, but then that little kind of it, it seemed like a, a pretty good kind of wipe out there out the open. Um, right. So. What did you see on the opening there? Did you take any trades? Were you looking at anything? Michael, feel free if you also want to share your screen. You yeah, take be, over, yeah. my friend. Uh, there's a present yeah. button down at the bottom there. Right. Once you hit that, you'll see shared screen there. At the top, you'll see windows or entire screen, whichever one right. you want to kind of share there. Let me do that. So I'll share the screen. Of course. And in a few minutes, we'll talk a little bit more about, of course, the Fivers trade the pool. If you guys want to check it out, definitely. I'll throw up a link so you guys can check that out in the chat. 
definitely one of the things that we all need is tools to be able to trade. So we'll talk a little bit about that coming up here. But I see your screen, Michael. I'll put you up here. Let's take a look. Okay, yeah, nice. So basically, we talked about it uh, like in the live stream that I did. Um, I had like four stocks to, that I watched, right? All mm -hmm. of them came after earnings. That's in most cases, either especially for the earnings season, you want to go for those, obviously, those uh, stocks in play. In most cases, I will trade just Tesla or the Qs. Um, again, because I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just focusing on that. But obviously, for the earnings season, you got to have those popping and dropping stocks. Stocks. So RBLX was on my watch list. Uh, what I will usually do is just go to the uh, pre-market, you know, just analyze it a little bit, um, put some lines like I did before, mm -hmm. and just wait for the scenario to occur, right? As soon as I see that, it's much more easier to just commit to that trade. Yeah. Simply as like that, you know, just trade what you planned. As mm -hmm. you don't I love, see that. I love that, right? Michael. I love it. Draw it for yourself, right? I mean, yeah. if that's what you're expecting, and then then if it follows the key, I mean, it's going to be 10 times easier probably to execute. 100%. I mean, mentally, it's easier for you to work like this. So. You know, I had two uh, draws. One scenario is for the upside. The other one for the downside. It went for the scenario to the upside. So basically broke it, retest the level that we marked from the um, hourly chart, held it right at the beginning. Also 200 EMA. I always like to put it on my one minute chart. I know uh, like a one minute chart sound crazy to use for 200 mm -hmm. EMA, but you will see it. It works amazing. And basically, it held it and just uh, went st uh, straight with it, uh, closed it just a little bit uh, after it break through that uh, previous high. And although it continued nicely afterwards as well. Um, so that was RBLX. I also did um, Airbnb. I heard you talked about that, mm -hmm. right? So again, Definitely. after earnings, two scenarios mark the levels and then uh, draw two scenarios. One of them was either breaking that 200 EMA and the support level, retesting it, dropping down again, or just break through, uh, break through also that level, play with those levels to the white uh, lines and basically try to catch uh, something from that. I did two trades here, one that didn't work. I actually uh, started to buy as it went back to that level, mm -hmm. it took me out. And then, and then after that, bounce again, retest, entered, took out some uh, partial here. And then when it broke that level, it took some uh, out as well here. But again, as you can see, it went nicely to the upside afterwards. And again, 200 uh, EMA just perfectly worked. Held it uh, on pre-market, then also in the market. So that's perfect. Definitely. Love it. Love it. I, I, I love these trades too. And I, I think that one of the things that, you, uh, that we always want to do is try to keep it simple, right? And, and have situational awareness on both sides, right? If we only think about one side of the, of the coin, then when the other side presents itself, a lot of times you either don't have a play like you're doing here, at least you have a play, or a lot of the times we'll freak out, right? <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and that's just because you weren't even thinking about what could happen to the downside, right? What would be that downside setup? So I think this is a really great way to go about it. And one of the things that can really help you is that now you're kind of looking for more, where does the price go versus being biased towards the towards the, the bull side or the bear side. So I, I really like the way you're going about it here, Michael, on, on these trades. And this is really what it's all about, right? I mean, the truth is we don't know at the bell if it's going to go up or down. We don't. And we never know, right? So we can only play the scenarios that we prepared before. And if it goes to our favorite, fine. We need to manage the trade. If not, then maybe we don't execute the trade. You know, I had... Many times that I had the scenario planned uh, before and it didn't go to according to my plan. I missed that trade and it went straight up, right? So I basically missed a great trade or a great opportunity because it went up uh, very nicely. But in the end, you know, if it's not my setup, then it's not my setup, right? 
That's this exactly is, what it is. Yeah. You got to know what works for you, right? And a uh, personality is so important in the trading. Find what works for you. Find what plays are better for your personality. Some people can trade off the one. Some people can't. Let's just be honest. And it looks like, Michael, you can handle that one, baby. And that's what matters. I think that's what you always just got to find what works, right? Um, I've traded off the one. I've traded off the five. I love how you brought the hourly levels in there because I always talk about the hourly chart being so important to know where those levels are, especially like big resistance, let's say prior day resistance. Let's see if we get a little bit of a pullback to yesterday's resistance, a little bit of a bounce, uh, like in the roadblocks play. I could see that action happening. And I think it's so important to kind of show that too, right? The hourly charts are, are really good ways to find those resistance and support pullbacks, especially for like intraday action, like where you get this nice little red to green off of those levels. Yeah, uh, Those and, plays are great. And yeah, I also talked about it again uh, today, basically, you know, a lot of traders, you will see a lot of uh, lines and uh, trend lines and uh, horizontal, whatever it is. And in most cases, it might not work. What mm -hmm. you really want to do is basically keep it as simple as you can. You know, if if this is a line that most guys at home or uh, algos won't find, then it won't work, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that it's super clean. So every piece of algo that looking for those support and resistance levels will react to that. So that's, uh, for example, in uh, RBLX, that's, you know, close of the gap or entering the gap or breaking through that resistance level, just as literally as simply as that. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what it is, man. I laugh because it like, Michael, I mean, just look like two lines there. <laughs> like I hear y'all Roblox, man. That's how it is, man. And I, I think that that's the important thing, guys. You guys see it there is just keep things simple for yourself, right? How's my approach today? Where are these levels? Could we get a deeper time frame pullback and then a recovery in the day? And that's almost exactly what we see happen today in a, a stock like Roblox. A little bit of a deeper time frame pullback out the gates and then boom, we're right back in there and looking good on the day. And I think that, you know, a lot of traders get washed out on those opening moves because they're yeah. trading the open and, that, and that, that's kind of normal. But there's another way to definitely look for those pullbacks instead of just being ready out the gates, getting in the first order and then watching it go back to that hourly level. So that's a lot of reason why I also do a lot of swing trading, Michael, is because I see those hourly pullbacks and I'm like, hey, man, if I can grab 10 shares down there, 20 shares down there, risk, uh, you know, a buck, two bucks, yeah. get like, you know, three, four, four points on the upside move. Man, I ain't going to be mad about that. That's not that's not a bad little risk to return. And so that's why I go about it with those deeper time frame pullbacks. Um, but really great stuff here, Michael. Enjoying it for sure. Let's talk a little bit more about Trade the Pool. You're, you're from Trade the Pool, Fiverr. Let's talk a little bit more about prop overall. I think it's very important. You know, I we have a trader, Dennis Dick, that traded with prop firms for pretty much majority of his career. He just wow. recently switched off. And that was why. Because the man built enough capital that he doesn't need the prop anymore. But the truth is, like most traders, we need capital, right? And we, we need to, we need to access to capital. That's the important part. Because if we're really going to do this for a living, let's just be honest. And I, and I talk about this all the time with my trading. And, and why you guys see me work for Benzinga every day. Because the truth is, I don't have the true capital size to get me to that level of account where I could do this as for 100% for all my living, right? And yeah. I think that a lot of traders face this, right? So tell me a little bit more about what you do there, Michael, and about Trade the Pool and the Fiverr. Yeah, definitely. So basically, we are a pro firm that uh, fund stock traders, right? And we are the only one in the world that doing it online at the moment. We have, um, um, you know, feed coming from New York Stock Exchange and CBOE. We have 12,000 symbols, stocks, and ETF. Uh, ETFs, you can basically short any penny stocks that you want. No restriction on that. No hard to borrow, stuff like that. Um, and Because we have, we have a big pool to trade on. And... The thing about it is quite simple. You know, as a trader, I've been trading and day trading for 15 years. 
And as a trader, when I started, like you just mentioned, you know, I had $10,000. It's not enough to play with, you know, especially when you want to go for the big names and you want to put some size on it. And the only way to uh, fix that is first understand that you need more capital and a prop firm can do that for you. And second, um, when you're trading on your money or maybe your parents' money, you still feel very attached to that aspect, right? So yeah. if you have a, you have a loss, yeah, you basically enter in a trade and you don't want to lose. You're always thinking about that money. You don't yeah, really it, know, it, like, like your brand don't, doesn't know if you're going to get back that money, right? Yeah, let, let, let me uh, let me at least a uh, quick interjection there, Dad. I'm sorry, dude. I'll get you it back. <laughs> yeah, this is this is exactly like this. So yeah, you need capital. You don't want to trade your own capital, and uh, you need risk mechanism, uh, like in a default, like a default mechanism in your system, basically. Because I was before I became the CEO of uh, Trade Pool, I was the head of the traders in one of the prop firm in Israel in Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. and that was you know eye opening for me. I traded with a lot of capital. I traded with basically it wasn't my money, so I didn't care about losing the money in a good way. You know, it's just detaching yourself from yeah. from the money and the default mechanism like daily loss. 30% risk out of uh, the daily loss per trade, stuff like that, that basically preventing you from blowing your account. And that, mm -hmm. that's that's the magic of basically trading in a prop. So uh, when you... Yeah, I think what you just said there is very important. So one thing I always talk about in trading that is very, very hard to do and why I sometimes even love to trade live, right, is accountability, right? Mm -hmm. There's this thing about accountability where if you're really being held accountable, like in a, in a prop firm, right? They're going to be watching for certain max drawdowns, things like that. What does it yeah. do? It really puts it in your mentality that, hey, I can't break these rules. Now they're, now they're kind of unbreakable rules versus yeah. just something that you're setting for yourself, right? And I think that this is the true hard part of trading is how can we be accountable for ourselves, right? Maybe sometimes that's trading as a team, and trading into a prop firm can do things like that for you, right? Help build up those rules, build up that discipline that traders truly need to get to the next level. 100%. I mean, the, you know, I had plenty of times when I traded my own capital and said, okay, I'm going to risk only $100 in this trade, but it, it became, you know, $200 loss, right? $300 yeah. loss, 500 I had this famous um, uh, trade. I talked about it in a few webinars. I lost in three days. I lost ninety-one thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, just it was thirty percent out of my account. It was crazy for me in three days to lose that kind of mm -hmm. money. And I just kept adding to the losing position and you know the roller coaster. So uh, when you have that mechanism inside of your system, they're telling you, listen. It doesn't matter what you want to do. The system will automatically close you at daily loss, no matter what you're thinking of or your emotion or revenge trade. All of those nonsense are actually gone as soon as you do that. So basically, Trade Pool gives the opportunity for all traders worldwide. You know, you go through an evaluation process. So you basically pay a small fee between $97 all the way to $1,200. Depends on the tier that you want to choose. You mm -hmm. go through the process of the evaluation. If you pass that, you get funded and start splitting the profit with us. Simply as that. I love it. I love it. I mean, at the end of the day, I've always looked for different abilities, right? It took me a very long time, like most traders, to get above the PDT, right? I mean, that's just the true fact of in the nature of it, right? And not a lot of us are going to be able to take maybe like a small account to get it to that P out of PDT rule. Let's just be honest. Yeah. That's going to take years, years and years and years to do, yeah. even at the best kind of return, right? I mean, and so I think that the best thing that you got to be looking for yourself is what type of abilities do you have, right? 
because if you're really having that ability to where you feel like you're ready to really day trade, right? You're going to yeah. need to be having the capital to get there. So I think this is definitely one of those ways that you can get to that next level, especially if you feel that you're ready, right? This is for traders that feel they're ready to go, have already kind of maybe adapted to some strategies, have played out a little bit and ready to go after it, right? Because the idea here is for you guys to make a buck and for me to make a buck, right? That's the truth, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, that's that that means that I'm ready to get after it and size up, work my way towards that profit. But that's what it's all about, right? I mean, that's what we're here for, right, Michael? Yeah, and I mean, you know, what's funny, Mitch, because I always interview our traders, you know, the one that get the past evaluation and get funded. I always do an interview, you know, just to mm -hmm. get to know them, understand who they really are, uh, the way they traded, what happened when they had a drawdown, what happened when they had a, a good run, stuff like that. To basically, like the mentality side. And I actually came across, you know, traders that been running for 10, 15 years, right? Makes sense. But I also have traders that are doing it for a year. Right, mm -hmm. they had like um, six months on a demo, took the evaluation, or started to trade on their own capital for a few months, and then took the evaluation and basically passed that because the mentality shift once you get you know you have enough capital and take the money aspect out of trading, you can yeah. actually make logic decision during a live session, right? Yeah, and I think that's just this is the way it's going to go too. And I think that uh, you know this is one way to test it out too, right? Test it out with a little bit less capital because it's not all the capital that you're putting up, right? And I think yeah. that that's also another way. Um, I remember when I first started, we got a question here, so I'll really quickly go through the story. Stay focused. Asked, did I ever join a prop firm? Yes, when I first started, that's how I learned a lot of the tools that I have today. And did, yeah. Well, did I lose maybe an account or two there? Yeah. And it was kind of a learning process for me. But what it gave me an ability to do was trade names like Apple, like Microsoft, like Tesla, where in the past, let's just be honest, I wasn't trading those names. I was trading penny stocks and, and taking whatever I could get, right? Yeah. So that I could get some type of return. But the truth is I wanted access to trading names that everybody could trade. So that's why I went to a prop firm, learned a lot. Then once I started getting to that point where I started seeing, you know, the profitability, then that's when I started taking away from that aspect. And that prop firm kind of went down. We could talk about that another day. But when that happened, that's when I really started coming to Benzinga and started switching over and then really taking my steps to the next level. Why? Because I had earned almost my ability to trade by using a prop firm, by having that capital support to be able to trade different names and actually be able to trade them. Not like they take one share of Tesla and say that I know how to trade Tesla now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is very difficult. So that's just a little story of a little background on my prop experience. So I appreciate you coming on, Michael. We're going to have you on well, back you. again. I, I yeah. love hearing those day trades from Roblox and Airbnb. Looking forward to hearing more from you, Michael. So you guys definitely stay up with Michael. I will do my best to go ahead and keep you guys up with some of his trades. Thank you for coming on today, man. We'll have you yeah. back on. Thanks so much, Mitch. Take All care, right. guys. Have a good one. Let's go back to the market. Appreciate Michael coming on today. And definitely let's take a look into the market, how we're doing now. Looks like we pulled back a little bit on the SPY here. So let's get to kind of just the one minute action just so we can see what recently happened. We were up there banging, banging on the SPY. And then all of a sudden right here towards the kind of the close, it started to pull back. That's where I got to make a decision with Google here. We're up there towards 112 here. We got this one at 110.89. Will this pull back and give me an opportunity to come back here towards the 109? And I could see this pulling back a little bit here, but I don't know if it's going to be able to get back towards where I got in. So at that point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep the rest of the trade on for the swing because we've already taken that great of a profit, right? And so Google, we've already taken some off there at 113.33s. It's at 112.28. We'll look to see if this can keep going. I'm going to keep the remaining of the shares for the swing. We'll see what happens on that one. 
already got a really nice profit on that one. Where did Unity end up? Did we get up there past the 29010 uh, area? We got right towards 2908. So it wasn't a bad little day trade there to end the day on Unity. I hope you guys enjoyed that action. That was live right there for you guys. And definitely smash the like. And how long before you felt like you were good at trading? How many years? I'll tell you right now, Hammer. It wasn't the first two years. It really took, I would say, I really started trading kind of like 2016. Okay. In 2016, I was just kind of learning. 2018 is where I started making some money. And some of that might have been a little bit more of like some luck because I ran into the shippers. I don't know if you guys remember the shippers, but uh, there was like ships uh, that did this crazy move like in, in like 2018 that just kind of like went through the moon. Stocks like that. St stocks like that is what really kind of got me going. Uh, there was tops, T-O-P-S. Um, stocks like that is what really got me like into kind of the trading action. It was right before this 2018 when you could see all this pop here on this. But that's what got me going a little bit. And then really where it, cooked, where it clicked off was right before kind of the 2020 action. That's really when I started making some more money on swing trading. And of course, we knew how 2020 went. That really kind of drove things higher. And when I came to kind of right here, like, you know, right around this kind of uh, 2020 time in, let's say, July, I really started taking my game to the next level. And really, that was kind of the best year, right? I mean, who didn't have a really good year in 2020? So that's where that's where really the consistency started. And now it's just been kind of keeping that going, right? Uh, <laughs> ship F that, <laughs> said Crassy. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I had some good beginner luck, you know, and, and it happens. Uh, but the truth is, is that, hey, once you make that luck, it's more about finding out how we can keep that money, right? And so from there, that's what it's all a bit, always been about. How can we keep this money? How can we have a repeatable approach? And swing trading has truly done that for me. That's one thing that I can definitely say. I have found my bread and butter, which is swing trading. Whether that be, you know, some people think options is best swing trades. Well, hey, to power to them. I just like going for simple shares and keeping things simple. All right, it's four o'clock, team. That's going to do it for us today. Let's go back to the SPY. SPY overall, let's see how it's doing right now. It is kind of getting a nice little up move here towards the close. I kept that Google. I have NCLH also. Not a bad little close on that one. I really like the hourly chart on NCLH. You can see how it's building up. We'll look to see if this one continues higher after recent moves on RCL. CCL is another one that I was looking at, but I felt like it already left the building. So went after Norwegian. I'll see you guys like always. Bright and morning. Check it out, team. Mitch, can you tell us about Mumu? Well, Pat, you know you could tune in there for live trading and learn a little bit more about Mumu. I actually can't even take a day trade right now on Mumu. I already spent all my trades in my small account challenge. But that's going to do it for us today. I hope you guys enjoyed the action right here on Benzinga. And I got a small little video here so you guys can check out a little bit of Trade the Pool. I'm going to throw up a link in the chat. And I will see you guys bright and early, of course, on pre-market prep tomorrow. Let's see what Dennis has to say. That was a crazy ride in the market today. Got to be nimble. Got to be quick. And sometimes you got to be even quicker than that. All right, we'll see you bright and early in the morning. Number one rule in day trading stock is don't risk your money. The second rule in day trading stock is have enough capital to trade freely. Introducing Trade the Pool. Trade our funds in your own unique way. Here's how it works. Step number one, show you can trade and prove your profitability. Step number two, get funded. Trade the pool and keep up to 80% of the profits. Step number three, stay consistent and get access to unlimited buying power. It's as simple as that. Sound good? But wait, we got more. When you join Trade the Pool, you get a free user for the best tools in the market. Trade ideas, Trend Spider, Bookmap, Trader Syncs, and more. We have been here for a while now, from 2016, when we built our first brand called The Fivers a well-known and respected prop firm for indices and FX trading. But enough about us, let's talk about you. Are you ready to be a stock star? Start trading now.